Okay, so this is the third video in our series of Year 10 probability videos and here we want to continue to think about our intersections and unions as introduced in the last video, but we want to talk about a specific um, connection between those things which is called the addition rule. And the addition rule really is quite intuitive. Um, so often you'll find that you're actually using the addition rule without really thinking about that's what the fact that that's what you're using, um, but we can formalise it into a rule which can be useful at times as well. All right, so let's start from an example. So 20 people, surveyed, 20 people are surveyed about whether they like to eat ice cream and whether they like to eat sausages. All 20 people admitted to liking at least one of ice cream or sausages. 18 of the people surveyed like ice cream and 13 like sausages. How many people like both ice cream and sausages? Okay, so let's think about trying to represent this with a Venn diagram. Actually, I might... Okay, so we're going to have ice cream and sausages. Um, all 20 people like at least one of ice cream or sausages. That means there's zero people out here. So the three numbers in the circles must add up to um, 20. 18 like ice cream and 13 like sausages. Okay, now the problem we have here is that ice cream, 18 like ice cream is those two regions and sausages is those two regions. So we know that that number plus that number is going to be 13 and that number plus that number is going to be 18. But we also know that all three of those numbers has to be 20. So those two things together actually tell us about the intersection. And some of you will be good at kind of holding this in your head and some of you will struggle and will need to kind of rely on the... Um, on the formula here, the addition rule, which is what we're using. So what you need to think about, or one way to think about it is, you need there to be a total of 20 people. However, 18 plus 13 is um, 31, okay? So there are too many people. Um, there, are, there are 31 people listed there when actually there's only 20 people that were surveyed. So it's actually the difference between those two things that tells you how many are in the intersection. The reason this is adding up to more than 20 is because those 11 extra people were, have been counted twice. And that's because there's 11 people in the intersection. Sorry. And so hopefully once we work that out, everything should work out. 13 like sausages, which leaves two people out there. 18 like ice cream, which leaves nine out there. And ooh, I haven't quite got it up. I haven't, sorry, it's not nine. 18, seven plus 11 is 18. So it just leaves seven out there. And so now seven plus 11 plus two is 20. And there's 20 people in total in the circle. This is one of those examples where if you really struggle with that, you might actually find that the table is better for this. If you had done it with the table, ice cream or no ice cream, sausages or no sausages, you know there's 20 people in total, you know that they all like one or other, so no one's in the not ice cream and not sausages, um, 18 like ice cream and 13 um, like sausages, so that leaves two there, it leaves seven there, that makes that seven, that makes that two and that makes that 11. So this is one of those examples where the table is just much easier because you can record all those totals and you're not trying to hold as much in your head. Whereas with the Venn diagram, I'm trying to go, well, okay, 18 plus 13 is, is 31 and that's 11 more than 20 and so there needs to be 11 in the middle. Whereas the table just lets you kind of work it out as you fill it in. Um, as I said, this problem, which is relatively easy to do in our head, could, could be also solved using the addition rule for probability. And the addition rule for probability says that the probability of A union B, so that is all the things in the, in the circle, so the three regions, that's the union in there, is the probability of A, which is that, plus the probability of B, which is that, but minus, sorry, I just need another highlighter colour, it's going to overlap. I'll just use a pen. But minus this bit in the middle, A intersection B. And that's because if we add up A plus B, we've counted the intersection twice. And so it doesn't equal the union. And so therefore we need to take away the intersection in order to get it to equal the union. Um, it's also true that the number of elements in the union is equal to the number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in the intersection of A and B, whether you use probabilities or number ofs. Um, it's still the same property. Um, and that's exactly what we sort of did in our head here. We went, okay, well, if we've got, you know, 18 like ice cream and 13 like sausages, that adds up to 31. And we know that this has to be 20. And so the difference between these two things tells us what's in the intersection. Okay. 
We did that in our heads, and often you will do it in your head quite intuitively. All right. But there is a formula. Okay, let's work through some examples. 50 students are surveyed about their subjects. It's found that 30 of the students study further maths and 20 of them study history. If 13 of the students study neither further maths nor history, find the number of students who study both further maths and history. Okay, so if we think about a, a Venn diagram, you could also use a table. As I said, the table sort of requires you to, you less consciously use the addition rule with the table because um, it's a bit easier. Um, so I'm going to choose the hard way here just to illustrate it, but I think it would be easier to solve this using a table given it doesn't dictate what sort of method you need to use. Um, it's found that 30 of the students study further maths and 20 study history. Okay, so the further maths circle has to add up to 30. The history circle has to add up to um, 20. 13 study neither further maths nor history. Okay, and 50 students were surveyed in total. Okay, so what we know is, the, oh, well, it's not probability, it's the number of things in the union of further maths and history is equal to the number of things in further maths plus the number of people in number of students shouldn't be things this time they're students number of students in history minus the number of students who do both further maths and history okay and that's just the addition rule that we've got up here so i know the number of um, students who do further maths or history needs to be 50 minus 13 so it needs to be 37 the number of students who do further maths we know is 30 plus the number of students who do history is 20 and that will be minus the number of students who do both. So 37 equals 50 minus the number of students who do further maths and history. And so therefore the number of students who do further maths and history is 50 minus, uh, sorry, yes, is 50 minus 37. So it is 13. So there are 13 in the middle there. Um, and we therefore know 30 study further maths, so that means there must be 17 out here, and 20 study history, so there must be 7 out here. And together, those should all add up to 50 students in total. Now, as I said, you don't need the formality of this with all the notation and the formula, because really, if you can do that, think that through in your head, that's fine. So we've got, we knew there was room for 47, sorry, 37 people in the circles. We've got 30 plus 20, 50 people to try and fit in there. The reason for the, um, the reason that 50 and 37 are not the same is because there's 13 that have been counted twice because they're in the intersection. Okay, example two. If A and B are mutually exclusive events where the probability of A is 0.7, find. Okay, so mutually exclusive means that they have no overlap. So if you were to draw the Venn diagram, the circles would be separate, okay? So if this is A and this is B, and we know A is 0.7, um, we know the probability of A intersection B is zero. That's the definition of them being mutually exclusive, okay? Probability of A union B would be the probability of A, ah, oh, sorry, there's, a, there's some information missing there. Um, we're going to need, I'm gonna make it, uh, what else do we need to know? We need to know one of the other probabilities probability, of, I'll just give you probability of B. Let's say that's 0.2, okay? Sorry. So if A and B are mutually exclusive events where the probability of A is 0.7 and the probability of B is 0.2, find the probability of A intersection B. So there is no intersection. The probability is therefore zero. And the probability of A union B. Um, now, if, it's, if they're mutually exclusive, the probability of A union B will be the probability of A plus the probability of B. Because if we have to take away the intersection, that's zero, okay? And so therefore it's just probability of A plus probability B, so 0 0.7 plus 0 0.2, so 0 0.9. All right, example three. If the probability of A is 0.15, the probability of B is 0 0.65, and the probability of A intersection B is 0.1, find the probability of A union B. Now you could draw a diagram here, or if you're comfortable with the addition rule, probability of A union B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. And we've got all those probabilities. So A is 0.15 plus B, which is 0.65, minus the intersection, which is 0.1. Um, so what's that? 0.8 minus 0.1. So 0.7 is the probability of A union B. All right, example four. If the probability of A is 0.1, probability of B is 0.54, and the probability of A union B is 0.5, find the probability of not A intersection B. 
Okay, so we might want to think about um, a table or a Venn diagram here, um, but we're going to still need to do some calculation before that's useful. So even if we thought about a table, so we could have A and not A, and we can have B or not B, probability of A is 0.1, probability of B is 0.54, um, because we've got probabilities, we know the whole table will add up to 1. Probability of A union B is 0.5, so we don't have anywhere to put that right now, okay? Um, because it's the three areas add up to, so it would be these three areas add up to um, 0.5. Um, so you can use that because though, because it does tell you that this has to be 0.5 here, because it has to be 1 minus the union. Um, and from there you should be able to fill in the table, so you could do it that way. Um, but if you didn't draw a table, you could probably you could use your um, addition rule. So we know the probability of A intersection B is, sorry, A union B, is probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. Okay, and so fill in what we know. So we know the union is 0.5. We know A is 0.1, we know B is 0.54 minus probability of A intersection B. So 0.5 equals 0.64 minus the probability of A intersection B. And so therefore the probability of A intersection B is obviously 0.64 minus 0.5, which is 0.14. All right, so we know we have 0.14 here. Um, and therefore we can work out that the probability of not A and B, which would be this here, okay, so probability of not A and B is going to be 0.54 minus 0.14. So it is going to be 0.4. So combination of the rule, a table, a Venn diagram, whatever's helpful to enable you to organise the information so you can um, work out what's required. All right, example five, last one. If the probability of A is equal to the probability of B and the probability of A intersection B is equal to 0.24 and the probability of A union B is equal to 0.7, find the probability of A. Okay, so we know that the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B, take away the probability of A intersection B. Okay, so we know that the union is 0.7. We know that the intersection is 0.24. And we know that A and B are equal to the same thing. So let's just call that X, okay? Probability, if the probability of A is X, then the probability of B is also X. And so what we know is that 0.7 equals 2X minus 0.24, sorry. Let's add 0.24, so that's going to be 0.94 equals 2x, and so x is going to be 0.94 divided by 2. Uh, let's see, 94 divided by 2, 90 divided by 2 is 45, 4 divided by 2 is 2, so it'll be 47, so it's going to be 0.47. And so the work for today is um, exercise 8C.